Greetings and welcome to another Tomorrow's World webcast. My name is Wallace Smith and it's wonderful to be here. And I almost feel like today's webcast has been pressed upon me by necessity. Actually not by necessity, by a whole lot of you. So many people have sent me this same article, whether it's on Facebook or by email, and I'm very grateful, thank you for doing it, but I just felt like after all of that I had to talk about it. It's actually an article from Business Insider published January 14th, even though a lot of people found it on Yahoo News and, and similar sources. The title was this, the two most dangerous numbers in the universe are threatening the end of physics. Now essentially, when you really read the article, uh, it sounds terrible, the end of physics, it's a summary for the most part of a TED talk uh, given by a, uh, someone who works at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. It's a particle accelerator uh, by the name of Harry Cliff. And I watched the TED talk, it, it's about 14 minutes or so, it's really nice. Uh, to a certain extent, it's sensationalistic uh, in that he essentially talks about two particular numbers. One of them is something called uh, uh, the strength of the Higgs field. It's a number related to this fancy field. Don't worry about it right now. And the other is the strength of something called dark energy. Actually, that particular part of his video actually was a little humorous. And he talks about how if these numbers differed by just a tiny bit, the whole universe wouldn't exist. And yet, Physicists can't explain why those numbers are what they are. I have to say I was a little disappointed to a certain extent because there's a whole host of numbers in physics that are just like that. It's not just these two. Uh, to me, I, I don't want to accuse Mr. Cliff of anything inappropriate, but I think there's a little bit of sensationalism on the part of uh, the TED Talk apparatus. It's not just two numbers, there are many numbers that if they were even minutely different, for instance, the, the ratio of the mass of, an, of a proton to the mass of a neutron, if that was only minutely, I mean, hair's breadth doesn't cover it, minutely different, again, the universe might not exist. Uh, life certainly wouldn't exist. And there's a whole host of these numbers, and in physics they can't explain. They can't explain why these numbers are the way they are uh, ex without conjuring some kind of multiverse. With, without going into it, even a multiverse doesn't explain all of that, and frankly, most of that is fantasy. Please do look it up on tomorrowsworld.org. You can go to our search box and type in multiverse. I wrote a whole article about that. You might enjoy it. If it's not your cup of tea, don't bother with it. But what does it really mean to be the end of physics? Uh, do they mean simply that there's realms that we won't be able to explore uh, with science? Well, certainly there are. Science will not be able to answer every question. That's part of our kind of cult mentality in the modern day, is that somehow if science can't find the answer, there's no answer. That's ridiculous. You know, there's philosophy, there's mathematics, there's logic, there's aesthetic judgments, there's morality, none of which can truly be tr uh, touched and grounded in science. There's revelation from God, which goes virtually denied in the scientific realm, and yet God is the one who authored all of science and the principles that we study. But I kind of like to take it in a different direction. He talks about the end of physics. If you think of it a different way, the word end can mean purpose. Like when you ask someone, uh, of some, say some villain, well, what were his ends, uh, the means to an end? That is a purpose we want to achieve. And if we mean that by the end of physics, then frankly, I think there's a conclusion the Bible does give us. What is the end of physics? Uh, we read the Apostle Paul writing in Romans chapter 1 and verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his speaking of God, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Part of the end, if you will, the purpose of physics is to find the God who is the author of the physical laws. If we find signs all over our studies that someone behind the scenes who isn't a part of this material, physical realm has been tweaking the numbers in our favor, shouldn't we reflect on the nature and quality of what kind of person that ought to be, that would be a worthwhile end of physics. 
thank you to those who sent this to me, and I do hope this webcast has profited you. Do check out everything we have at tomorrowsworld.org.